we have come to Mount Zion, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God. Destinies are going to be changed. Lord, we thank you because healing will take place even as the ministry is going on, as your word is coming forth. Lord, we thank you, God, for the angels that are being released right now as the word will be coming out. Lord, we thank you, God, because, Lord, we are not receiving this word from men. We are receiving it from you. Lord, we thank you, God, as we host your presence this morning, Lord. Have your way in our midst. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Come on, let's stand up as we put our hands together. As we welcome Bishop Robinson. Lord, we thank you for your word, for anointing your servant for such a time as this. Lord, we thank you, God, for our ears anointed to hear your word from the heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, we shout, amen. Salam. We give you praise, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. holy. I want you to shout it. Are you old Oh, mighty, worthy you holy God we honor you and bless your majestic name the one who dwell in an inapproachable light full of glory and power our God you have no limit you are not limited by anything you are just so big even the world you hold it in your hands how majestic you are Lord we give you praise. We give you glory. The nations will worship you. And everyone who has bread, bless the name of the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy is endures forever. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory and all the praise. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. That's why we put our crowns before you. And we worship you. And we worship you. The one who sits upon the throne, be exalted, be praised. Be praised forever. Holy Spirit, we thank you because you are here. You are majestic. You are powerful. You are God. The living God, we worship you. 
and we release ourselves into your hands and we say unveil the mysteries of god here with us we give you praise blessed holy spirit and we worship you and say welcome 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 holy one we love you we bless you we honor you in jesus name amen amen you can sit down please last week we talked on walking in the miraculous amen walking in the miraculous say with me in the miraculous today we are ministering you are god's weapon of war we introduced this last week and i just want to conclude that today you are god's weapon of war i want you to turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you are not normal you are a weapon you are god's weapon hallelujah amen praise the lord if you have been thinking that you are something is strange about your neighbor you can tell him right your neighbor right now <laughs> this is your opportunity to say what others may not want to say say neighbor you are not normal Neighbor, you are strange. You are God's weapon of war. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you because you are God. And your name will be exalted this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. Hallelujah. You know, the greatest trouble with the church of the living God is not understanding the finished work of the cross. The greatest battle is that the church of God still lives as if we live in the old covenant. The new covenant changed everything. And the new covenant is the revelation of God's mystery. That glorious mystery should make you run through the wall. Amen? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, what God has done, what God has done inside of you, for you or in your place is a mystery hallelujah glory be to god glory be to god amen because today when our brother was praying i said to myself god is a good god when uh, um uh, pastor charles mba was praying i just said to myself it's, it is as though he was preparing the message in the night with me because he was praying my message the power of of oneness in the spirit Amen. hallelujah that's what happened when you flow in the holy ghost the things fit together the worship the the ministration even the worship songs fitted together my wife did not know exactly what i was sharing this morning so he, she, she, i'm not i'm sure she did not tell the worship team i want to announce to you god is a great god amen, amen. hallelujah say with me i am god's weapon of war I want you to shout it as if you believe it. Shout it. I am God's weapon of war. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So before we read the word, I just want to say two things that will help you. The first is that the gospel is twofold. Number one, substitution. Say with me, substitution. It means that in your place, Jesus died. In your place, 
Jesus was made sickness so that you will be healed. In your place, Jesus went to hell so that you will not go to hell. The gospel is substitution. Jesus paid for you. Amen? Are you getting it? Okay. So he paid in your place. Everything that you live for, you enjoy, is that someone suffered so that you can enjoy. Jesus became sin so that you become what? The righteousness of God. Jesus became sick so that you become what? healed he went to hell so that you should never go to hell he took your place so it is the first aspect of the gospel is substitution amen he suffered so that you don't suffer he became poor so that you become I like that one voice He became poor so that you become rich. The problem with man is that, let me tell you, the fall of man was the greatest disaster in human history. Because something of Lucifer entered man. And it's called the spirit of unbelief. And it makes the human being struggle to receive that which God has done. Because it, is, it sounds too good to be true. The gospel is too good to be true to the human being that is struggling with unbelief. When you say it, man wonders. But let me tell you, the gospel is good news. And let me tell you, the good news of God is greater than any news on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we mean substitution. Shout it, Substitution. Amen. Now the second aspect of him that reveals who you are indeed. It's not subst in substitution. Someone did it for you. But the second aspect of the great redemption story is inclusion. Shout to me inclusion. Shout it inclusion. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And that is the mystery of what we call in him. Say with me, in Christ. Shout it, in Christ. Say, in Christ. Amen? Amen? So, inclusion is the secret of the power of God. Oh, Father, thank you. Father, thank you, Lord. Listen carefully. The mystery of inclusion is that we were crucified with Christ. Say with me, crucified with Christ. Say crucified with Christ. It means you, everyone here was nailed on the cross. You were included. Say with me, I was included. Amen. You were crucified with Christ so that the body of sin might be destroyed. Say with me, I was crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I announce to you, you have been crucified. If you are showing flesh, flesh, I can tell you, I can tell you that no, 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 no. If you are married, let your wife or husband tell you, this, this one, this type of behavior is not the crucified one. <laughs> but I want to say, it's not just crucifixion. The Bible says what? We were also, we died with him. Amen. Let me tell you what I'm sharing with you today. Ask God for revelation. It is the secret of spiritual power. Amen. Say with me, the secret of spiritual power. And the days of the superstar is over. That's why we are holding this miracle crusade, miracle conference. The goal of the conference is that all the church of the living God enter into the triumph of God. 
The other day I was praying for the conference. I said, Father, why is it that we have had one of the greatest battle, the greatest resistance for this conference? You know, when I came back from Ghana, even I, I, we were, I was attacking every form. Financially, my, how did they call it? Uh, my uh, air condition just got bad. Five ton air condition. Ha! Huh? When I heard the price to repair it, I said, Karabashanda. You pray in the Holy Ghost when you just hear the price. And it's always at the time you need it the most. Summer heat. And once, once one, one person came and told me 23,000. Another one said 21,000. Huh. Thank God somebody. That's why you better check and shop where. Somebody came and did it for half of that. Hallelujah. And I was saying to myself, Lord, where do we get such money? <laughs> Not only that, things, the stove, one thing after the other, breaking. In. I said, but what is happening? Even the TV just crack. I then I said, what did we do in Ghana that makes Satan so angry? He said, since I cannot touch them, let me just strike the TV. <laughs> the refrigerator. The, the, the range, the, the cooking, the stove. Yes. It is as they said, let me just strike these things. So I was pondering, I said, Lord, who, how can it happen all at once? It's not normal. Usually appliances go one then you fix it <laughs> the other one goes i don't know of three to four appliances at once i knew this is not normal i said lord what is happening the lord said you're entering a new season <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god glory be to god glory be to god so you're entering a new season I announce to you all you are entering a new season amen and the more the attack is severe the more the victory of god you will know the intensity of the move of god by the intensity of the opposition you are facing whether whether in your health whether in your home whether in your children whether at your job site the intensity of god's power manifests with a mighty resistance from hell when hell is moving let me tell you the raw power of god is moving the problem is that many people get so discouraged you should instead laugh when you get to the house the air condition is bad everything is bad and your pockets are dry you should laugh with Satan. is this how far you can go <laughs> hallelujah glory be to god to god be the glory to god be the glory amen we are knocked down but not discouraged hallelujah knocked down but not discouraged why because greater is he who lives inside of us than anything that is in this world we are not afraid of battle because we are god's weapon of war hallelujah say with me i am god's weapon of war amen so the mystery is in him say with me in him say in him hallelujah you you were crucified with him you died with him say i died with him all of you here died so if you are manifesting flesh you are trying to go to the graveyard to pick something and show. Hallelujah. You know, it's, it's this uh, funny man of God. Uh, what does he, what does his name again? Jesse Duplantis. Who said, one day, a man was trying to disturb him and he said, Lord, permit me to go back to the graveyard. <laughs> to bring 
uh, let me deal with this guy just one time lord <laughs> and the lord said no jesse you are dead you cannot bring the old jesse back hallelujah tell your neighbor do you know that you died in him you died with him hallelujah hallelujah amen say with me in him shouted in him so you did not just died with in him something also happened you resurrected in him do you see the process of the mystery of god the first is crucifixion suffering say with me crucifixion amen the second is death with him hallelujah but the secret of the release of power of god is that you must die what limits god's power flowing in us is living flesh you have to die to resurrect now the resurrection power of god reveals the highest power ever manifested in the universe hallelujah hallelujah that's what the bible says if the power that raised jesus from the dead abides in you he will raise jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by what his power that abide in you and that power is what the power of the holy spirit Amen. hallelujah so resurrection reveals the marvels of god the one who raised Jesus from the dead. Because let me tell you something. The greatest opposition was manifested during the resurrection. All of hell came together and said, Let, let's kill this. Because the only thing that separates Christianity from any other religion is resurrection. That's why the Bible said the disciple preached the resurrection of Christ. Because it was uniquely Christian. It was not some method, some things about death and life and the rest. No, it was someone who arose from the grave. That is unique to Christianity. Because the bones of Buddha are found in India. The bones of Muhammad are found where? In, in Mecca. Hallelujah. The bones of Krishna are found in India. There is only one empty grave. There is only one empty grave. There is only one empty grave. Jesus arose from the grave. Hallelujah. The resurrection is the cornerstone of Christianity. The resurrection reveals the power of God. It separates those. It separates the real from the fake. It makes Christianity unique. It makes Christianity clear this is the way of God. Hallelujah. Because resurrection answers man's greatest enemy, which is dead. Do you know man's greatest enemy is dead? The resurrection provides answer. Hallelujah. And listen, the resurrection, it means that you, you arose with him. You are alive with him. That's why Jesus, when he stood before the grave of Lazarus, he did not only say, when Martha told Jesus, he said, I know that in the resurrection, uh, uh, he will rise again. Jesus did not say, yes, I will help him to rise. I will help him to rise again. Jesus said what? I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. So when me, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So resurrection is not a thing. It's a person. But this is the glorious mystery. You resurrected with him. Amen. The greatest battle is to get the saints to understand this great redemption. You are special because God did not only do it for you through substitution. God did it with you. 
No, 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 no. Just a few, amen. Kandaraka, Sharaka, Robaka. Hallelujah. He did it for you, but he did it with you. Kandarabaka, Daraba, Sharaka, Robaka. Rakadaraba, Sharaka. Shout a shout of victory. Amen. Say in him. In him. And let me tell you, if he ended there, it would have still been wonderful. But he did not only resurrect us. The Bible says, we are seated with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We are seated with him where? In heavenly places. So therefore, the one who resurrected took you to sit with him. <laughs> because listen carefully God is just if God took you to go through through the cross he took you through death took you through resurrection he has to take you to through glory hallelujah the one he called he justified the one is justified, sanctified. And the one is sanctified, he glorified. You see the patent of God here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because after justification, he sanctified you. After he sanctified you, what does he do? He glorifies you. And that glorification is to sit with him in heavenly places child of God you are not a natural human being you are supernatural being you have been raised to sit with God himself and you have to understand you are sitting with the living God you are sitting with the one by whom and through whom were all things created it's a seat of power in him is the glorious mystery. Say with me, in him. In him. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the scripture. It says, Ephesians 4 verse 8. Let's read together aloud. 1, 2, 3, go. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. This is the glorious mystery between substitution and inclusion. Say with me, substitution and inclusion. Amen. There were things accomplished in substitution. The first year was what? He led captivity captive. Say with me, he led captivity captive. Every bondage that you ever think of has been rendered captive. Captivity is not it's not something. Captivity is a personality. And the captivity of the world is the devil himself. And everything that represents the devil. Cancer has been rendered captive. Diabetes has been rendered captive. High blood pressure has been rendered captive. Call any disease. It has been rendered captive captive amen so child of god that which is tormenting you, your tormentor has been rendered captive he led captivity captive the accomplishment of the cross is something you will study all eternity because i pray that on earth we get the revelation because we need it here on earth for battle hallelujah Hallelujah. So your captivity is rendered captive. He led captivity captive and then he gave gifts to men. Before he gave you the gift, he rendered your enemy captive. <laughs> oh, how great our God is. How great our God is. 
how majestic our God is. Father, deliver your people from religion. In the name of Jesus, we renounce religion, the religious mind that has hindered us from understanding the mysteries of our redemption. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Let's go to verse 9. If you can put, uh, do you have, um, uh, is it TPT? It says, let, let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. He ascended means he that returned to heaven after he had first descended from the heights of heaven, even descending as far as the lowest part of the earth. Wow. Now, we are talking about inclusion. Say with me, inclusion. He defeated the devil, listen, not for himself. The Bible says, clearly, if you say Jesus is Lord, Satan knows and does not only know, he trembles. So Satan knows that Jesus is Lord. The Lord Jesus did not need to defeat him. Before Jesus, he's nothing. He only defeated him for us. It's for you he defeated him. That's why the scripture says he led captivity captive for you and for me. Are you getting it? Now, the scripture says he ascended means that he returned to the heaven after he had first descended from the heights of heaven even descending as far as the lowest part of the earth so listen when he descended when he descended he included you because he took you to the grave with him <laughs> hallelujah this is the wonders of god are you understanding me the wonders of god is that for you to experience resurrection you must die so for God to give you resurrection power, he included you in his dead. Oh, I pray for revelation. For you to experience resurrection, you must die. So in order for you to experience the mighty power of his resurrection, he had to include you in his dead. That is the reason for which Jesus included you. The Bible says we died with him. Oh, what a wonder gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Say we died with him. Amen. Say we died with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 10. Now let's read aloud. The same one who descended is also the one who ascended above the height of heaven in order to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things. Listen carefully. He did not only descend, he also ascended. So he went to the grave, but he left, he resurrected, and he ascended before the throne. He included you in everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He resurrected with you. And he ascended with you. Hallelujah. Remember that Jesus is the head. We are the body. He could not go alone. Some people got it. <laughs> If only your head appears somewhere, something is wrong. No, 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 no. I think the, uh, well, you are a little bit quiet. Let me leave you for a few minutes. Let me come to the side that is excited. I'm saying if only your head, if your head alone appears somewhere, people will run. so there was no way jesus who is the head of the body could have gone before the father alone he had to go with his body amen you are the body of christ he is the head so jesus appeared before the father with you Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. He appeared with you. Hallelujah. He appeared with you. And my brother is shouting glorified. Because there is no way he will appear just with the head. The body and the head must appear before the throne. And it does not end there. He sits with you in heavenly places. Oh, the wonders of our redemption. The wonders of our redemption. A child of God, you don't know how blessed you are. You are special. Shout with me, I am special. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Then verse 11. Verse 11 says something very crucial. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. And he has appointed some with grace to be apostles. And some with to be prophets. And some with grace to be evangelists. And some with grace to be pastors. And some with grace to be teachers. Now understand the glorious mystery of the fact that you are God's battle axe. This explain it better. If you put New King James, it's shorter. New King James. Listen carefully. You as a person is the battle axe. Not what you have, but you as you are. Remember, you are not fighting in the grave any longer. You are not fighting on the cross any longer. You are not fighting even with resurrected any longer. You are fighting seated on the throne. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So it says, let's say, let's read it. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors. Listen carefully. Say to be shout it to be i want you to get this just as a gift to the church apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers in that order you yourself are the gift are you getting me it means you don't have the gift of apostleship no you are the apostle. Are you getting it? You don't have the gift of, 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 of evangelism. You are the evangelist. Are you getting it? I want you to get it. That's the difference between understanding the mystery of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Lord Jesus. The gift of the Holy Spirit are weapons of war given to you to fight. The gift of the Lord Jesus are the gift God gave to the world and to the church. You yourself is the gift. I want you to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes to see in the realm of the spirit. You don't have a gift. You are the gift. Now put back a, a TPT. Say with me, I am the gift. Shout it, I am the gift. Amen? As a teacher of the word, you don't have the gift of teaching. You are the gift. As a prophet, as I put back the TPT, the, 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 the as a prophet, you don't have the gift of prophecy. You are the gift. As a pastor, you don't have the gift of pastoring. You are what? Say with me, I am the gift. Amen? There is a difference here. When he ascended, he gave what? Gives unto men. He gave, say with me, he gave gifts unto men. So this whole world has received you as a gift. I think you are getting it. Remember, 
The pattern is this. As my father has sent me, even so I sent you. Jesus was sent to the whole world. So have you been sent to the whole world? Jesus was sent to touch the world. So have you been sent to touch the world? Jesus has made you a gift to this world. Child of God, you are a wonder of the creation of God. That's why the Bible calls you an unheard of creation. A creation that has never, has never been seen before. In the new birth, child of God, you are not normal. Fanel, you are not normal. What does he call other people crazy? You are not normal. Hallelujah! So as long as you look at yourself as normal, you have missed it. You are the creation of God. And you are not just a creation. You are a new creation. Shout with me. I am a new creation. Created in Christ Jesus. Say created in Christ Jesus. For good works. Hallelujah. So what flows out of you is only good. 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 Created for good works. Hallelujah. Amen. Child of God, you are blessed. Raise your hands and say, I am blessed. Shout it, I am blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, in him, in him, in him. Say, I am the gift. That is why in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 to 23, Paul cried. This is how that this is why Paul cried out. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. If you are there, verse 16 to 23. Amen. Let's read one, two, three, go. My heart. And I constantly remember you in my prayers. The new King James says, I do not cease to pray. Listen carefully. Touch your neighbor. Wake up. You don't have neighbor. Look for one. <laughs> Say neighbor. Listen carefully. This will change your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. When I was praying today, the Lord opened my eyes to something. Paul did not say, I prayed for you. Paul said, I do not cease. I do not cease. It means he had one prayer for these people. Constantly, does it? Constantly. Because the greatest battle of man is to understand your inclusion. Religion tells you substitution. Easily. Yes. Because in substitution, he did it for you. You can detach yourself. In substitution, he did it for you. Jesus did it for me. Even most religious people who do not even believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit say, he did it. He died for me. Isn't it? He died for me. They can accept that. But when it comes to inclusion, there lies the heritage of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Those are the ones the whole earth is waiting for. The earth is longing for what? The manifestations of the sons of God. They are saying, where are the sons of God? Where are those who carry the power of God? Where are those who died with him? Who resurrected with him? Who ascended with him? Who are seated in heavenly places? Where are they? 
Listen, when you say sons of God, you are saying what? The divine attribute of God. Those who carry the DNA of God. Those who have divine ability of God. Child of God, look at your neighbor. And I want you to insist, say neighbor, look at me very well. I am not a normal human being. I am supernatural. I carry the DNA of the living God. Wherever I go, the living God goes. Rakadarabaka shara kadarabashanda. Rakadoro kudarabaka sharaka. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says, Paul says, I do not cease to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. Paul was saying, I don't stop praying like this. So it is a message for you. You should not stop praying like this. How come Paul would say, I, I don't stop. Through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was revealing something. The mysteries of God must be taken by force. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence take it by force. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's go to verse 17. You will see what Paul was praying. Verse 17 says what? I told you where we tip it. It's okay. Okay. Listen. Let's, let's read. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Listen. Once you know him, you know yourself. Because you are in him. To know God, to know who you are, you know him. Once you know him, you know yourself. The less you know him, the less you know who you are. You can't know God by conjunction. You can't know God by human thinking. You can't know God by the five senses. God is known by revelation of him. And once you know him, you get to know who you are in him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, you know, if, if, if they were buying this message somewhere, I'll buy it myself and listen. The revelations that are coming out of here, people of God, are coming from the throne of God. They were not prepared this morning. The Holy Spirit is unveiling revelations. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To know yourself, you must know him. Once you know him, you know who you are in him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's read aloud again. One, two, three, go. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. Hallelujah. Then verse 18. Let's go to verse 18. Verse 18. Let's read aloud. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy ones. Listen, it is in you. Are you getting it? Because there is a glorious inheritance that you inherited when you died with him. When you resurrected with him. Hallelujah. When you were crucified with him and you died with him. You were resurrected with him. You are seated with him in heavenly places. That is your inheritance. Child of God. You are a wonder of the creation of heaven. What? This is a wonder. 
Say with me, this is a wonder. I want you to shout and say, Father, grant me a revelation. Can you put New King James? I feel like there's so many revelations bumping at once. And I, I, I don't want us to miss it. Amen. So receive grace. Just say, Lord, I receive grace. Sometimes when your head is, you can't get it up with your head, we receive it with your spirit. So open your, your spirit can get more than your brain can get it. Hallelujah. So now see this one he just said here. I want to ride on this cloud just a little bit. Because I feel like this is so full. Oh, Lord, what was it? Okay. The what is it? The treasure. What did he say? The inheritance, right? That glorious inheritance is in us. So here's it. We were put inside Jesus. Jesus went through this whole amazing journey. Going up, going down, descending. And the father just crowns him. He says like, good job, good job, father, my son, you have done an amazing job. But we, because we entered inside Jesus. Because we entered inside Jesus, went down to hell with Jesus, and defeated principalities with Jesus. Now when we ascend to the throne with Jesus, there is same inheritance that the Father gives the Son, he puts it inside us. You have also done a good job for going through the process. And that's the glorious inheritance that came to us because we were included in him and went through the process with him. There is a reward of going through the process with Jesus. Did somebody get that now? So it's like you take a ride with somebody <laughs> you just because you were in the car. You did not drive. You did not attack anybody. You, did, you were not at any speed. You were in the car. And you arrived together. And you arrived as the first. Together with the person who was driving. Because you were in the car. The prize that was given to the winner. Was given to those who were in the car. Why not continue? <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory be to God! That is a teacher bringing my message and adding the level of teaching to an apostolic minister. Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory be to God! Hallelujah! You are included. Say with me, I drove with Jesus. The Lord Jesus was driving, but I was in the car. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory be to God! And let me tell you, Jesus will not be a good driver if he, if he threw you out of the car. He has to arrive his destination, which is the throne of God. <laughs> Hallelujah! The greatest battle, as Kenyon said, is for man to see himself from, because of the horror of slavery, of sin. It's so difficult for man to see himself sitting with the highest glory of the universe. But to, today, revelation has come. Harakadarabasha. Shout to me, revelation has come. Amen. Amen. Now go back to 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 uh, TPT. Let's read aloud from there. Let's let's shout it. One, two, three, go. Are you there? Say, I pray. Say, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. Now listen carefully. Because spiritual things must be kept in your mind until it becomes real to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
Because all of you, even Professor Du was sharing with us, I remember in the car. You have to imagine yourself in the spiritual manifestation to enter into it. It is the power of your imagination. It is a huge gift God has given you. You begin because in your imagination, you are entering into spiritual reality. Why is it like that? Because the natural mind cannot receive the things of God. You must go beyond the natural to enter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, by the grace of God, I am entering into the mysteries of God. So let's continue. Say, floating you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. Listen, child of God. It's a revelation to understand the hope of his calling. Because the calling of God is the glorious mystery of the universe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, let's continue. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy ones. I want you to understand something. It says, find in us. Say, in us. In us. Child of God, you were created for war. There are weapons that have been put inside of you. And the greatest majestic weapon is that you were built in God himself. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you were forged in him. That's why you have eternal life. Eternal life is God's life. It means you cannot die. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? You have eternal life. Because you were forged in him. And since you were created in Christ and in him, you have Christ's ability. The Bible says, born of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who was not born after the flesh? But of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are born of the spirit. You are born of God. You are born of God. That's why the Bible says born again. You are born in God. Say with me in God. In God. Hallelujah. You are a wonder. No demon on earth has power over you. Verse 19. Let's hear verse 19. Paul continued to pray. One, two, three, go. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power. Say with me, immeasurable greatness of God's power. Made available to you through faith. The day you receive Jesus, something happened. That power was made available to you when you enter by faith and say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You move from a struggling human being to overwhelming power. A power we call, not listen carefully, overwhelming power. A power so great that the world has never seen. Amen. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Available through faith. Then, let's continue. He said, then your lives will be an, avert an advertisement of this immense power as it walks through you. This is the mighty power 
that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. Hallelujah! That power is available in you. <laughs> Glory be to God! Glory be to God! Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 21 continues. Let's, verse 21. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. And now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government, and realm of power in existence. He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised not only in this age but in the age that is coming this is the mystery listen he, you have been glorified are you getting it i'm speaking quietly so that you get it touch your neighbor neighbor listen say neighbor listen carefully hallelujah you have been glorified with him. Amen? And in that glory, the scripture says what? And now he is exalted. Because you have been exalted. Say, I have been exalted with him. Shout it, I am exalted with him. Amen? What has God done? He has, as he put Jesus above every ruler, he put you above every ruler. <laughs> just a few shouts here just a few shouts here a few shouts here hallelujah glory be to god he put you above every ruler and above what every authority government the lord showed me he said that is why my servant benson Edouza exercised authority over government Do you know he overthrew just by his word two governments? A government in Nigeria, he told the president of Nigeria, he said, I evict you out of power. A president that was fighting his church. In a, in a matter of four days, he was out. He told the president of Ghana, I overthrow you. Within a month, exactly 29 days, he was out. Child of God, authority over government. <laughs> Remember, the governments of the earth represents the powers of the earth. You rule from heaven. No, 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 no. Children of God are not getting this. I pray you get it in Jesus' name. You rule from heaven. God is restoring the authority that Ben Sinhi Etauza had back to the church. He knew that God was in him. He, he and he ruled. Before men, he did not pray, he commanded. Hallelujah. When he told this guy who was just a, a, a small boy I'm selling him as they call it, how do they call it? How do I explain that? Can you can you explain help me by you're a businessman? So by him sell him in the English what how do you call eh? a what? A hawker? Petit trader. Petit trader. This guy, the, the richest man in Africa was what? Dan Gute was just buy and sell them. What they call petit, petit, small traders. Okay? I want you to get it. Somebody who sells like his uh, little uh, thing there. They, you know this is small. Uh, uh, my son was telling me because my son Paul cooked very well. See? Hallelujah. He did not just get it from the mother. He got it from the father also. Hallelujah. Combination of both. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, 
my son Paul has been talking about the possibility of starting a small uh, thing, a small food drop where he could make his, his, his nice chicken there and sell. He wants a small job to make some money. That's what we call small business. Eh? You get what I'm saying? This guy, Dan Gote, was a young man doing that. When Benson prayed for him, you know the story in the plane. He did not say, Lord God of heaven and earth, Abraham, God of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, show up from heaven, make this man. No. He knew who he was in him. He was speaking in him. I hope you are getting this. You are speaking from the throne. Hallelujah. You are speaking from the throne. Hallelujah. He said, this day I make you the richest man in Africa. And it was settled. If you want to be the richest man in Africa, wait for Dangote to go. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? The power of a righteous man praying. A man who sits on the throne. Child of God. I'm saying this again and again. You are not normal. If you want to be normal, then you have not touched Christianity. Real Christianity is overwhelming for us. I repeat, overwhelming force. Shout it, overwhelming force. Amen. So he says, let's read the Lord. One, two, three, go. And now he is exalted at first above every ruler, authority, government, and realm of power in existence. Listen, he is not exalted alone. He is the head. You are the body. He is exalted with who? With you. Hallelujah. He is exalted with you. Say with me. Say with me. The Bible says, He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised. Not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. I want to tell you, there is no power or name in this earth that can overcome you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> An army of God is rising. Right here in this place and online, that will change the course of history. I give you a word. An army of God is rising. Who believe who they are in him to change the course of history. As long as you know who you are in him, there is no power in the universe that can stand against you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Say with me in him. Shout it in him. Verse 22. Let's read aloud. Verse 22. One, two, three, go. And he alone is the leader and source of everything needed in the church. God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ and has given him the highest rank above all others. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Verse 23. Let's read aloud. And now we his church are his body on the earth and that which fills him who is being filled by it listen you are part of christ say i'm part of jesus say i'm part of jesus shout it i'm part of jesus you are his body amen you are his body and his body is where seated with him where in heavenly places as we explained he did not go alone i want you to picture it who here drove with people in their car today as my wife explained you drove 
Okay. Let's take brother Judy. He drove with his wife and children. Who was driving? Brother Judy was driving. Did the other arrive? The others arrive with him. Are you getting it? Child of God. Your driver, the Lord Jesus. Arrived. And you arrive with him. Glory be to God. That's why the scripture says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Yes. I didn't write it. It's, it's, it's the scripture. Child of God, believe the scripture. He who is joined with the Lord is one spirit. It means you and the Lord are one. They cannot separate you. You are his body. You cannot be separated. You have been anointed to do wonders on earth. You are one spirit with him. When you appear somewhere, small Jesus has appeared. <laughs> you say with me, I am one spirit with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Amen. I was now bringing you all to conclude this message with this particular verse that I, I gave you at the end of my message last week. Now you will understand why this verse. Let's go to Jeremiah 51. We'll read verse 1 first. Verse 1 will reveal to you a secret. And then after verse 1, we'll go to verse 20. Let's read aloud. 1, 2, 3, go. Jeremiah 51, behold, thus says the Lord, I will raise up against Babylon, against those who dwell in Lib Kamel, a destroying wind. Listen carefully. The Holy Spirit is a destroying wind to cancer, Amen. to diabetes. To any disease. Are you getting it? The wind of the Holy Spirit. The wind of God. Comes for good. To you is good. I wanted to explain how God manifests himself. Listen. When the Lord appeared before. You know. After the, the Jews were close. When they were close to, to the Red Sea. Do you know. That on the side. When the Egyptians were coming. On the side of the Israelite, it was what? Say light. On the other side, it was what? Dark. The same God who produced light with the Jews produced darkness with the Egyptians. <laughs> Some of you are already getting what I'm, where I'm going. Kandara, kandara. Are you getting what I'm saying? Glory be to God. To the enemy, the spirit of God it's a destroying wind. That's why the Bible says what? When the Holy Spirit came upon the Lord Jesus, the Bible says what? He was manifested to do what? To destroy all the powers of the enemy. Say with me all. The Spirit of God is the destructive wind against the powers of darkness. So, what did God do? In order to fight the last day battle, he did not only save you and gave you his son, he also gave you a destroying wind. Yes. That is why he told the disciples, you must wait in Jerusalem until what? You are endured with power from on high. Because you cannot go against the winds of the world without the destroying wind of the Holy Spirit. You can't go until the Spirit comes. And when it comes, you become a weapon of destruction. So listen. 
you carry within you a destroying wind. <laughs> My dear, you are getting it. You carry within you a destroying wind. You are not a normal human being. Hallelujah. Say with me, I carry a destroying wind. Hallelujah. Listen, that wind does not come upon you. That wind is with you. The promise of the Holy Spirit is what? He will be with you and in you. Say with you and in you. That's the mystery. The problem is that we only believe he's upon us. No. He's not just upon you. He's in you. And since he's in you, you are now a weapon. I say you are a weapon. Shout with me, I am a weapon. Amen. The wind of God has changed you. You are not normal. You have within you the wind. Remember, the wind cannot be controlled. So no, any power of darkness can control you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we mean no power of hell can control me. You carry a destructive wind. If any wish want to play with you, release the wind. <laughs> Witches and wizards who crumble before the wind of the Holy Ghost. You carry a destructive wind against the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Then in verse 20. This will help you. Let's read. One, two, three, go. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you, I will break the nation in pieces. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. Listen carefully, child of God. God has made you his, the representative of his son on earth. As his son dominated over the powers of the air, so you dominate over the powers of the air. As his son spoke to the sea and spoke to the waves and the water and they obey him. The disciples turn and look. Who is this that even the seas and the water, the waves obey him? That same power God has sent on earth. God has multiplied Jesus a billion fold. <laughs> Hallelujah! Are you getting the mystery of God? Listen to this mystery. God is omnipresent. Shout it omnipresence. Touch your neighbor. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Listen to the word. God is omnipresent. Amen. God has chosen to make himself omnipresent with the church. It means, put your address. Don't worry, you don't have to say the town. Put your address. Give me an address here, just an address. If, especially if you're out of town. 40. Okay, let's do 40 South Church Street, the address of the church. 40. 40. This is what you call the residence <laughs> of men and women who carry heaven and carry the glory of God with them. So, they don't have weapons 
only. They are the weapons. <laughs> Listen, Mama Christian. Today we are celebrating the birthday of your wonderful husband. Daddy Jack was born on this day. This man I love very much. This man who trained me and brought me up in the Lord. My spiritual father, he was born on this day. Are you getting what I'm saying? He was born on this day. Listen. There is a day that you became born again. It's far greater than the day you were physically born. We will celebrate his birthday today because he was born today. But his birthday is not compared to your birthday in him. Amen. You became a wonder the day you were born in him. <laughs> Child of God, I want you from today to get up and let hell begin to run. Do you know what a Satan is said? He said, no Satan is, no demon can stand a Christian who know who they are in Christ. It is the knowledge of who you, who you are and what you know about who you are in him that chase demons and cause satanic powers to flee and run for their life. That's why the Bible does not say, resist the devil and he will walk away from you. He will flee. Flee means what? To run in terror. Frightened. When someone flee, it's not normal running. Even people who don't do marathon, they will, they are, their best will come out. If a lion enter here, many of you will say, Bishop, preach your message alone. Even those who have never, some of the people who have never run will be the first outside. They don't know how, what carried them outside. They will fly. So I'm saying, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. He will run in terror from you. Hallelujah. Shout with me, he runs in terror. From me. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am God's weapon of war. Amen. Amen. You are that weapon. Listen carefully. When disease comes your way, when disease, you face it everywhere, you are God's weapon against disease. You are God's weapon against demon infestation. You are God's weapon against curses. You are God's weapon against every power of darkness. You are God's weapon against the powers of the enemy that rule America. You are God's weapon to shake the earth. Hallelujah. Do you remember when the disciples just prayed? What happened? The Bible says what? The earth, where they were praying, what happened? Began to shake. I announce to you, your prayer shake the earth. The problem is that we feel we are normal. That's why we don't, we don't experience the shaking. But the sons of God are rising out of this house. Oh, to God be the glory. Therefore, where you go, when God moves somewhere, it shakes. Listen carefully. The weight of God is inside of you. If you were just how many kilos, how many pounds? Let, let's say you are 200 pounds. If you are 200 pounds or you are 150, I don't care. Don't worry. But I have. Do you know when they say the Shekinah glory, you talk about the weight, isn't it? The weight of God glory. You know what it means? Listen, when you walk in a place, it feels as though one million tons or more has passed. 
Because it's not just your weight that goes through, but the weight of the Shekinah glory. So listen, the one who is in you, and you in him, and you in him, you walk somewhere, his weight comes into being. The ground must shake. And then cancer begins to shout in terror. And he runs for his life. Child of God, you are a wonder. I say you are a wonder. Shout to me, I am a wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. When I was praying today, you know what the Lord told me? The Lord said, my son, tell the church, they are my only answer to the world. You are the only one who stands between the devil and this world. You are the only one who provides hope for, for the earth. It is only because of you Satan doesn't destroy this nation. You are a restraint to evil. Hallelujah. You are the only answer to the world. The answer of this nation doesn't lie in the presidency. It lies in the people of God. The answer for the earth lies with you. And I want to say this to you. Even the youngest of all believers in this hall is a terror. From today, once you know who you are, history changes. You enter your room like this. Every small demon, no, they don't run. They flee. Thus, you have to add terror there. Run in terror. Eh, Mishka, the English lady, you help. Say with me, run in terror. Amen? It's not normal running. Hey, hey. No, that's jogging. The real running is a type of running where you get out there, you don't know how you got there. But you know you got there. <laughs> Hallelujah! You were born to terrorize the devil. In Christ, you were born to terrorize the devil. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Say so with you, I break nations. And you see, you are my battle axe. And weapons of war. There's S there because we are many. And every weapon here is unique. <laughs> every weapon here is unique because the military doesn't have just one weapon to the water they provide a different battle submarines and warships and the rest are you getting they send the navy there There's a brother who was in the navy he's right there they send the navy there to the to the air, what? Air force, different weapons. To the ground force, they have what? Different machines. Every part of the military has a different weapon. Let me tell you, we are not the same weapons. Everyone here is shaped to destroy a different part of the battle. Rakadarabashanda. Hallelujah. So don't compare your weapon with your brother sitting near you. The main thing is that they are targeted against one enemy. The reason why there is envy and jealousy in the church because you don't know who you are. 
If you know who you are, you won't bother about the weapon your brother is carrying because your own weapon are dangerous and they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Their weapon in your hands, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Your weapons are powerful. No demon can stand your weapon. You carry divine ability that is not normal, that is not natural. Amen. Oh, to God be the glory. Amen. To the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Say with me, they are mighty true God. They are mighty true God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came to destroy. All the power of the enemy. Amen. Say with me to destroy. All the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. He was manifested for what? The destruction of the powers of the enemy. The Holy Spirit is who? The destroying wind. Against the powers of who? Darkness. Karaka. Now some of you are getting it now. Some of you are getting it now. So you have double portion anointing. The living Jesus inside of you and the Holy Spirit inside of you, they are both sent there for the destruction of the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. 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 That's why the Bible says, I give unto you power. <laughs> power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all. Underline with me all. Say with me all. all. Say all. all. Say all. all. All the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. It says, Behold, I give you power. I want power, not authority. That's King James. Say so we may give you power. Amen. Let's shout it. One, two, three, go. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Listen carefully. He give you power. See the both thing today. By grace, he gives you power. And that power makes you to become something else. And you become what? The one who tread. Are you getting it? You have power, isn't it? But what do you do? You who tread on the powers of the enemy. Who? And over, I give unto you power. To? To tread means to do what? What do you use to walk? Your feet. Your feet is talking about who? You. So you are the one who tread. You are that weapon. Today, may God open your eyes to see you. You are that weapon. The church has believed they have a weapon. But understanding you are that weapon changes the battle. Yeah. Yeah. Say with me, I am the weapon of God. Say, I am the weapon of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's why the Bible says, as the Father sent me, even so I sent you. You are God's weapon. Shout with me, I am God's weapon. As the Father sent me, even so I sent you. And the verse that has been reading in my heart as we close is the verse I shared on Friday. In, in, from uh, Mark, Mark 16, 15. Mark 15 to 18, as we close. This verse I shared on Friday I will conclude by bringing this. Listen carefully. This includes every believer. Touch the believer around you. He said, no matter how you feel about yourself. (laughs) 
no matter where you were born, say no matter where you were born, no matter how you were born, you are a mystery in Christ. You are part of Jesus. Body. Therefore, you are seated in a, in a position of power and authority over all the powers of darkness. You are given authority over rulers, over kingdoms, over governments. You are born to rule. Hallelujah. 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 Shout a shout of victory. Glory be to God. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Let's read aloud. We want to read? Let's shout it. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Continue. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now I want you to see something. The command to preach the gospel to every creature was given to everybody. Say everybody. everybody. And he continues. Say, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now where we have missed it is in verse 17. Let's go to verse 17. It says, let's read aloud. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Continue, verse 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Listen carefully. The Bible says, this sign shall follow those who believe when the apostles preached. Are you getting it? The Lord did not say, Rose Mevere, can you come here? Come on the stage. Come on, please. Listen carefully. The Lord did not say, these signs will only follow the apostles. It, God brought it to the young convert. God brought it to, say, anyone who called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then he said what? Those, uh, uh, those who believe, isn't it, shall be saved. Those who believe. And he said, the sign follow who? They believers. Those who just believe. Where the problem lies is that we believe that we must qualify for the signs. The day you came to Christ, you were, you died with him. No, you were crucified with him. You died with him. You resurrected with him. You are seated with him. This ascension to sit with him does not come after you fast 40 days. Does not come after you pray for 10 hours. It is included in the redemption. Once you say Jesus, redemption become complete. That's why the Bible says you are complete in him. So therefore, the youngest who is just one, one hour of one minute in the Lord has authority to heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, cleanse the leopard. If God gives that power to young convert, do you know? Do you know? This morning, the Lord opened my eyes to something. Do you know that the disciples, when they were walking with Jesus, they were not yet saved? Some people are getting it. Jesus constantly rebuked them for their own belief, isn't it? Their salvation came after the resurrection. That's why when Peter preached, he preached. Remember when Jesus was alive, they, he told them to go and say, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But when Jesus died, they preached and said, What? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Why? Because the Lord Jesus is dead, resurrected, ascended to heaven. You can now believe in him. 
you are believing in the full salvation which means crucifixion death resurrection and ascended the journey to the throne was not yet completed so salvation was not yet completed so the disciples peter james john they were all young convert <laughs> hallelujah they were young convert casting out demons raising the dead hallelujah they had no time to mix it with religion and judaism and other religion no they had no time to mix their doctrine with religion they have just believe you are getting it brother and may you move in the miraculous in jesus name and the lord spoke to me listen people of god religion is cruel we have believed a religion of qualification not the fact of substitution and inclusion grace is at the center of miraculous power you were put there not because you deserve it because jesus died for you you don't need to go on the fast to be seated on the throne you are already there raka 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 sharaka robaka raka darabaka sharaka the other day we were fasting as I broke my fast and tell you, I was very tired, broken on the rest. I was worshiping the Lord and blessing the Lord. And the Lord told me, my son, it's great to fast. And after the conference, you should enter into another fast for something big that I want to do in your life. But make sure one thing, don't depend on your fast. Because it is finished. Oh, child of God, something happened from the cross to the throne. And I want to say this you are no more. You are no more. You are no more. You are no more on the cross. But one, you are no more. Where? In the throne? I mean in the grave? You are not just resurrected. Where are you now? Just as Jesus is not in the grave, you are no more in the grave. Just as Jesus is no more on the cross, you are no more on the cross. Jesus is where now? Seated. So I announce to you, the battle is done. Christianity is done. 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 You are seated in a place of power now. And I want you to stand up and tell the Lord. Thank you Lord. Stand up and worship God. Give him the glory. 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 Shout a shout of victory. Thank you, Father, for the mysteries that you are unveiling this morning. Thank you for opening up your heart to us, Lord. 
and opening up who we are in you, Lord. This mystery made known is changed to us, Lord. This mystery unveiled has changed us to God. We just want to say thank you, Father. We receive it with gratitude. We receive it with grace. We receive it, O oh God, as a privilege, Lord. And we cover this revelations with the blood of Jesus. That they would take root in us. Root in our minds, Lord. Root, O oh God, deep roots, O oh God, in our whole being, O oh God. Until they bear fruit upwards to you, Father. Until they bear fruit that will reflect that which you have done tonight, this morning. To you be all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you just give Jesus a big, mighty praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chris, where are you? Hallelujah. As we're, as we're just, he was just giving the word. That this, we we'll just sing, you know, we sing the word, amen, so that it doesn't, we don't forget it. Amen. I was crucified with Jesus. I was crucified with him. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. I was crucified with Jesus. I was crucified with Jesus. I was crucified with him. I no longer live. I no longer live in me. I was crucified with Jesus. I was crucified with Him. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. I was crucified with Jesus. Yes. Crucified with Jesus, I was crucified with Him. I'm no longer live, cause lives in me. I was crucified with Jesus. I was crucified with Jesus. I was crucified with Him. I no longer live, Christ lives in me. I was crucified with Jesus. I was made alive in Jesus. I was made anew in Him. The old has come, the new has come. I was made alive in Jesus. I was made alive in Jesus. I was made anew in Him. The old has come, the new has come. I was made alive in Jesus. Oh, you were made alive in Jesus. You were made anew in Him. The old is gone, the new has come. You were made alive in Jesus. I was made alive in Jesus. I was made anew in Him. The old has gone, the new has come. I was made alive in Jesus. children are celebrating the king of glory daddy we just want to thank you for power that is in us in jesus christ there is power in us in jesus oh i was made alive in jesus i was made anew in him the old is gone the new has come i was made alive in jesus I was made alive in Jesus. I was made anew in Him. The old has gone, the new has come. I was made alive in Jesus. Oh, I am full of power in Jesus. I am full of grace in Him. The old is gone, the new has come. I was made 